We're talking push trucks, PA Posse, really big right rear wheels, and racing on dirt. From Silver Dollar to Williams Grove, Eldora to Devil's Bowl, and of course, Knoxville. This is Winged Nation, presented by Hercules Tires. Now your hosts, Steve Post and Aaron Evernham. Hello again. Welcome in. It is MRN Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tire here on the Motor Racing Network. So glad you joined us. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week. Aaron Crocker, Evernham, alongside of Steve Post. How are you? I'm good. Very How good. was the beach? Beach was good. It I was guess good. so. I saw pictures. Yeah, kind of chaotic. There was 25 of us, oh all family in God. one house. Very big house, but... Um, Enjoyable week, but I was ready to go back home. Ready to go back home, exactly. So you get back home, and then the uh, the national holiday of Kate's first birthday yes, was yesterday, yes. right? Big so, doings at our house. Oh, last you night. kidding me? Christmas, nothing yeah. compared to what you guys have yeah, going it was, on. It was a pretty big celebration. I was leaving the grocery store, and I might have had some, you know, beer and wine, or whatever, and checking out because I've got this first birthday cake, and the guy's like. This is a first birthday, and you've got. I'm like, well, you know, it's a, it's a national have, yeah, holiday yeah, around exactly, here. Exactly, so that's right. We had a good time. Great, I'm glad to hear it, and it's so exciting. I love, I love seeing pictures of you, Ray, with the with Kate and the family and everything like that. I just think it's great. It's just really, really. Thank cool. you. So, so yeah. how was Eldora last week? And Eldora last week was spectacular. Okay, the truck series racing there is really, yeah. really good, and it was our sprint car guys. Larson, yep. Rico, and uh, Christopher, Christopher Bell up front. So it was really, really good. Got to see the Super Dirt Series Modifieds, and I really enjoyed that. And actually, uh, coming up here on Motor Racing Network, Slinging Dirt, I'm going to be filling in for Strummy, so I get to talk about the beloved Dirt Modifieds. Cool. So I'm excited about that. Eldora was really, really good. I also hit this past weekend USCS in Carolina, Friday night. Morgan Turpin scored the win Saturday night. Eric Riggins won at Lancaster Speedway. And I've got to say that, um, you know, and, and, and I've shared here on Wing Nation my um, – the USCS bunch, I mean, I realize it's not the world of Outlaws or Central Pennsylvania, but I've been probably to three or four races a year seeing these guys. It's become kind of like a family. I, yeah. I love those guys and gals group. that race. Mm -hmm. It's great people from Pete Walton to the drivers to the teams. I love them. And um, I saw a, a great race on Friday night, Morgan Turpin. I saw one of the best races I'll ever see on Saturday night at Lancaster. Really? There are Eric Riggins, uh, Morgan Turpin, Nick Snyder, and, um, and Lance Moss all just absolutely going at it. At Lancaster. So, I mean, I just love going to those races. That's cool. I really do. It's just so much fun getting out to the USCS races. And, again, we we all know the scope of things and who are the big guys and who are the yeah. little guys. This is a great little 360 regional tour that it just is. knocks it out. Uh, Pete Walton said uh, they've had one track. The track promoter told them, and we're halfway through the year, one track where it's the biggest crowd in the history of the track. Wow. Multiple tracks. Six, eight tracks, maybe even more, where they've had the biggest crowd of the year. That's awesome. Uh, car counts. Now, they struggled a little bit at Lancaster. They were up at Carolina. Of course, two nights in a row is tough for well, some people. And, and that happened to me a few years back. We ran Carolina on Friday night, and I, I won. That's but that, when you I went, didn't make it to the race on Saturday night. Tumbling. <laughs> you went, you were, so I understand how you, you don't were, always make yeah, the second exactly. night. Exactly. So they were down a little bit, but their car count average is up. So everything is good, and I, I'm just happy for everybody there. Uh, World of Outlaws, we're at Williams Grove. Of course, that was the big yeah. one. Everyone was focused on it. Uh, no real shocker either way. Friday yeah. night, Darren Pittman, Darren Pittman winning at Williams Grove is not a shocker. Nope. And, well, Lance Deweese winning at Williams Grove has become expected. <laughs> yeah, okay, exactly. Really is. What is his stats now? What are they yeah, it's, yeah, un, like it's unreal. Still. I mean, winning percentage is unreal. Um, but when you look at this, Aaron, and I was looking at this, the Outlaw versus the Posse at the Grove. And, of course, we have Lincoln, we have Port Royal, have yeah. races there. When you look at the Grove, you look at the last four years, there's been 16 races. The balance is nine Posse, seven Outlaws. It's a great balance. Yeah, absolutely. Great balance, Okay. But but this is really controlled by a small number of drivers, okay? Three-time winners in 16 races, Schatz, Schatz. Pittman, and DeWeese. DeWeese. <laughs> How about that, okay? Two-time winners, uh, Stevie Smith is a two-time winner. Then you've got – so so what we've got here is 11 of those 16 wins have been won by four, four, people. four people. Two posse, two World of Outlaws, okay? When you look at individual race wins, Danny Dietrich, Greg Hodnett, David Gravel – they are the active drivers, and then going back, Don Kreitz Jr. and Fred Raymer, they've won in the last four years as well. Of course, those two retired. So yeah. I, I think what it is is the Still balance. It's a good balance, It's a yeah. great balance that they have Keeps there. Keeps our rivalry good and, and healthy. And it was great watching. You, you, you'd you watch that race, and here's Stevie Smith and Joey Saldana running side by side. You yeah. know what I mean? And, you know, you had Lance running up front. I mean, it's just so good what's going on there in uh, central Pennsylvania. And really good, Donnie Kreitz um, and Lance Deweese, $25,000. That's awesome. They've cool. had such a spectacular year. They really have a little bit of news from that race team. Um, 
there's been this move, um, and, 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 and rightly so, for that team to consider going to Knoxville. Rightly so. It's, yeah. It makes all the sense in the world. We want to see that team at Knoxville. When you go to Knoxville, you want to see the best. And right now, that's the best yeah. Pennsylvania has. <laughs> yeah. uh, Donnie Kreitz has announced this week that they're not going to Knoxville. Understand it totally. Yeah. And Donnie's still battling from the, the post-concussion uh, um, you know, problems you have. And Lance told us he noticed uh, that during Pennsylvania Speed Week, Donnie got tired along yeah. the way. And you know also, Aaron, when you put a plan together, one of the big mistakes is getting off from that plan. Mm-hmm. And they've got a plan. Yeah. And that plan is working spectacularly. Exactly. And going out to Knoxville could maybe throw things off. Exactly. So I... Keep I a good thing a good thing. Want to see that blue number 69K at the famed Marion County Fairgrounds yeah. like everyone else, but understand it. So Donnie Kreitz has announced that they will not be going to Knoxville. Uh, Danny Smith, an announcement that he will be going to Knoxville, but this will be his last Knoxville Nationals. He's going to, fo- but you know, and you're like, okay. I, do I really believe Danny? Well, there's, there's a good point there. But the good news is, is that he used hashtag short tracks only in 2017. Hmm. So we're not losing yeah, Danny. Yeah, he's not ready to retire. Uh, but mm-hmm. it, well, He's not ready to retire. Ever. For Pete's sake, he's not ready to stop winning, for God's sake. <laughs> um, but, um, but the good news is, is I think Danny's looking at just short track racing, it looks like, next year. And, and really, when you look at budgets and, and situations, yeah. and where he's at in Ohio, he can run all the time anyhow. Those slick short tracks, so short you don't tracks, need a lot of horsepower. We don't need. Yep. Uh, makes total sense. And the good news is, is Danny Smith will continue at a racetrack near you. <laughs> Uh, along forever. the way forever and continue winning at racetracks near you we're just going to do it on short track so you want to go see danny smith race don't go to a half mile go to a short track and and i just you, you take that note and you're like okay it's sad to see this is going to be his last knoxville nationals but the reality of it is, is we've noticed that the last few years on big tracks danny struggles a yeah. little bit and it's it's dollars yeah. it just is it's just reality why club yourself over the head and spend half the budget to go to half mile racetracks and get clubbed yep. when you can just knock it out of the ballpark which he does on the short tracks yeah, all the time so go, go know where you're at and go do it. So respect that. And finally, late breaking results. Casey Kane won at a Sweekin last night in the I 360 saw that. race. Very cool. How about that? Really, really cool. Let's take a look at the rest of the Valco Racing Wheels results page. We talked about the Summer Nationals at Williams Grove. The Articat All Star Circuit of Champions. Well, Christopher Bell won on Friday night. Rico Abreu won on Saturday night. Rico twelve thousand dollars, a twelve thousand five hundred dollars third All Star win. Now he's got a golden ticket to the Dirt Classic at Lincoln, which is the same night as the Truck Series at New Hampshire. So I don't know what time the start time for the Truck Series is, but if it's early, Mm. maybe Rico can make it uh, to see what happens. But uh, he won that. He won it was the uh, Dirt Classic Indiana. National Sprint League, the crowd pleaser. That was who really need to see. Yeah, eleven thousand dollars. They put up all kinds of bonus money up there. Eleven thousand dollars. Oh, oh, by the way, you know we talked about the National Sprint League, the Danny Lasowski Benefit League. Uh, (laughs) Wait, someone forgot to tell Delansky this because he's leading the points. Yeah, and rolling. So Craig Delansky, Brian Brown won at Knoxville. Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour. Johnny Herrera. uh, We'll talk to him. Um, Kyle Hurst won the King of the West Series. We'll talk to him. He swept that. Brad Loyette won the IRA sprints. NOSA sprints was Austin Pierce, Mark Dobmeyer doing the sweep the rest of the weekend. Other winners, Craig Mintz, um, A.J. Flick picked up a win, Cole Duncan, Michael Bauer, D.J. Foos picking up victories as well. Uh, sadly, we had three racetracks because of the heat. Jacksonville, Illinois, St. Francis County, and Missouri, and Fremont, Ohio canceling because of heat. Uh, our guest list today is fantastic because it's sweeps week. Okay, Mark Dobmeyer just well, he's been sweeping he's everything. He's on fire. Oh my gosh, dynamite is exploding. Yes. Uh, Mark Dobmeyer swept River City and uh, Badlands this past weekend. Kyle Hurst swept the Peter Murphy Classic out at Tulare, and Johnny Hollywood Herrera swept <laughs> Lucas Oil. So break out the brooms. It's sweep week. But the first guest we have is just going to sweep us right out of here <laughs> with, I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know how we tie a broom back into Ralph Shaheen, but uh, let's bring in from Speed Sport, Ralph Shaheen. Hello, Ralph. Welcome back to the show. Hey, buddy. You know, I didn't win anything over the weekend, unfortunately, so I feel a little out of place with <laughs> everything you just you listed there. But I did sweep out the garage this morning when I was uh, <laughs> there it is. on our Speed Sport conference call, so maybe, maybe that's how I get tied in with the broom. There we go. We're going with it. We're using it. That's for sure. Ralph, what we're doing here, and we are just having a blast with this, it's the Ultimate Knoxville Nationals, a main starting field. Speed Sport has put this together. Your organization, your group has put it together. And we're up to row number three. I'm going to give a quick recap. Those already in the field, 
Uh, Jeff Swindell will start 24th, Craig Kinzer 23rd, Jay Woodside, Craig Delansky, they're in row number 11, row number 10, Jerry Rickert and Roy Robbins, uh, 18th is Dick Gaines, 17th, Tim Schaefer, Stevie Smith 16th, Bobby Allen 15th, Greg Weld 14th, Joe Saldana 13th. That's what we've covered so far. We've got three more rows we're going to do over the next three weeks. So, Ralph, why don't you lay row number three on us here as we uh, continue on? Okay, and as we do that, as you know, Postman, we work from uh, the back to the front. Yep. So uh, we're going to start with position number 12. And this is the flying shoe. Ron Schumann mm. driving Gary Stanton's familiar 75. Schumann picked up his only National Nationals victory in 1979. Now, the Arizona native made 11 A-main starts during the Nationals, racking up four top five finishes and eight top ten results. And this is a, a little tidbit here that is great for the bench racing when you start talking about Ron because, boy, you might want to move him up based on this next stat. He did it in both winged and non-winged cars. Now, mm. does that factor in the way you look at this? And of course, everybody looks at this differently. So based on everybody we pulled, Schumann averaged a 12. Wow. In 11th, we got Ray Lee Goodwin. Now, Ray Lee Goodwin – Won the Knoxville Nationals from the pole in 1968 while driving the number 24 sprint car owned by Charlie Williams and Gary Swinson. The driver out of Missouri collected three top fives, five top ten finishes, and nine A main starts. Mm. Number 10. Pretty stout. I know this one, this one is dead. <laughs> nine and 10 are definitely debatable. Yeah. Okay. Nine and 10 are definitely debatable. And I'm not sure I like the way. We have it laid out. But, again, it's an average of everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, number 10, Sammy Swindell. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's the stats on, on Slam and Sam. Sammy has won the Knoxville Nationals only once. And I know that's the one that blows everybody away. That was back in 1983. This is the stat that's really impressive with Sammy. He's made the A-main <laughs> 33 times That's incredible. in a career that has spanned five decades. Good God. Swindell has, t- has 14 top fives, 20 top tens in the Nationals, but only one win. Mm, mm, mm. So, again, do you put a lot of credit to the win, the amount of starts, top fives, all that comes into play. And the reason why I say it's controversial is number nine. Okay. Dave Blaney, the Buckeye Bullet. Now, despite missing nearly two decades of racing at the Nationals while he was off doing that NASCAR thing, Blaney racked up some pretty good stats. The driver out of Ohio has won the Nationals once for Casey Luna in 1997, and he claimed seven top fives, nine top tens, in 15 A-main starts. Holy so I don't know. Should Sammy be number nine? Or should Dave be number nine? Mm. Based on everybody we polled, they put Dave in front of Sammy. And the other thing I've got to go back to is Ron. Should Ron Schumann move in front of Rayleigh Goodwin because he did it in winged and yeah. non-winged? Oh my I don't know. Gosh. This is the fun of doing this. This is and this is where we're getting now. I mean, this is now we're getting to the because I'll be quite candid and honest with you. We had Sammy significantly higher on ours than ten. Okay. Yeah. Uh, ironically, yeah. we had Dave one spot less. We had Dave eleventh, yeah. and you have him. And the and the overall. When I say you, uh, this is a group of us. We all submitted our ballots, so it's right. just the collective group. But this is where it gets fun. The the other thing I'm looking at, and and what we're going to do here is we're going to continue doing this the next two weeks and get to the uh, get to the ultimate field. And at some point, we're going to release our Wing Nation list. Okay. Right. Our Wing Nation list, and, and I, I would guess going forward, we're going to have most of the guys on our list that we that, that we agree on when you get up into the top ten. But so far, we have seven drivers on our list that are not on the list here. So we were totally looking <laughs> at this different than everyone else or something. So, But that's the beauty of it, Ralph. That's that's where we get to this debate, and this Sammy Swindell-Dave Blaney debate is fantastic. Yeah, I had Sammy higher too. Um, but, you know, Again, there's no right or wrong yeah. in this, right? And and it comes down to, you know, where did most people have these guys slotted that set the field the way we have it? Hmm. So uh, that's the whole object of this is we wanted to get the race fans talking about it. 
thinking about it, getting ready for Knoxville coming up in a couple of weeks. And while you're sitting up in the grandstands uh, at Knoxville during the week, in between, you know, heat races and stuff, this is going to be great stuff to talk about because still a lot of these guys are going to be racing uh, when we get there, especially a lot of the guys that are in our top ten. Adding numbers, that's for sure. Adding numbers. What's the latest? What's going on with Speed Sport, Ralph? Uh, well, we are uh, this week we have the Boston Louie airing from Seekonk, oh, uh, wow. the great Mima Midget race, which I know Aaron knows a lot about. Yeah. Uh, that event is going to be this Thursday night on our Suzuki Percent Speed Sports show. Some great pavement midget racing with winged midgets. That's a lot of fun. And then uh, this afternoon, I'm going to voice over the modified version of that show. And uh, that's going to air, I believe, next week. So lots of great stuff happening there with Speed Sport on the television side. And then, of course, the July issue of Speed Sport magazine is on your racks now and in the mail if you haven't got it yet. And uh, August, of course, going to have a ton of sprint car stuff in it. So if you don't have your subscription going, get over to uh, speechsport.com, sign up, and you won't miss out on all the great coverage of Knoxville. Great coverage of Knoxville, indeed. That's the Bible. That's what you need to take with you. <laughs> take a change of clothes and your speed sport, and you're good to go to the <laughs> Knoxville Nationals. Well, take two changes of clothes. Okay, it's well, a long one. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, It's yeah. pretty dirty. <laughs> three, maybe three. <laughs> wow, drive-by oh. by Ralph. How about that? <laughs> this is all good. Uh, but make sure you have your speed sport. That's for sure. Um, Ralph, as always, thanks for the time. Uh, we can't wait. Now we're getting down. We've got eight more names on the list. We'll get those over the next two weeks. But thanks for joining us here on Wing Nation. Great, my friend, and I'll see you guys in Knoxville. I'll be there this year. Can't wait to get there, oh, and uh, we can sit around and, and debate about this. Yes, indeed. Sounds yes, good. we will. That's Ralph Shaheen joining us from Speed Sport. Again, speedsport.com. You can find out all the latest. We need to step away from a guy who swept out his garage <laughs> to a guy that swept everything up in the uh, upper Midwest. Mark Dobmeyer, Dynamite, joins us next. Wing to Nation with Steve and Aaron will return right after this on MRN.com. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires will get you there. Whether you're running on dirt or running a job. Our dependable, high-quality tires are the perfect fit for your needs. For unmatched value, selection, and warranty with industry-leading road hazard protection, there's only one choice. Hercules Tires. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com or call 800-677-9535. Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Hi, I'm Jeff Gordon. Did you know that 43 children are diagnosed with cancer each and every day? That more children die from cancer than any other disease? Athletes of all ages are dedicating their stats to change these stats, and you can too. Visit JeffGordonChildrensFoundation.org to become a Kick It champion. No matter what sport, you can use your points, laps, or goals to change the odds for kids with cancer. Make your stats really count. Become a Kick It champion. Friday night, it's all sprint cars at Jackson Motorplex. Affordable family fun for the entire family. Witness incredible speeds, awesome power, and great side-by-side -side action at the all-new Jackson Motorplex. Be there this Friday night for the Bar Whiskers Classic presented by Abdo, Ike, and Myers. The Spirit Lake Silver and Gold NSL 410 Sprints return to action on the Big Half Mile. Along with the Last Tech 360 Sprints and the Race Saver 305 Sprints. Hot laps begin at 7.30. Save $3 by ordering advanced tickets online at jacksonmotorplex.com. The all-new Jackson Motorplex in Jackson, Minnesota. Where kids 12 and under are free. Be there. This is Tony Stewart. You're listening to Winged Nation on MotorRacingNetwork.com. Thank you, Smoke. Welcome back, everyone. It is MR on Winged Nation. Let's go to the Hercules Tire Hotline. Joining us on the Classic Inc. pole position is a man who swept the weekend. River City's on Friday night. Badlands on Saturday night. Six wins in a row. How about that? Six <laughs> wins in a row. Dynamite. Mark Dobmeyer joins us. Hello, Mark. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Well, thanks for having me back. It's good to talk to you again. Well, congratulations. Um, man, What a, I can't imagine being a driver winning six races in a row. You've got to feel like a million bucks. <laughs> it's been feeling pretty good lately, that's for sure. You know, we've been uh, we've been kind of strong all year, but we've kind of really came into a good uh, stride of speed here over the last few weeks, and uh, or the month of July, pretty much, you could say. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of funny. When things start going your way, it's like they just keep on clicking and banging. So it's been going good. I was just going to ask, is there something that you, you found in the last few weeks, or is it just momentum? What, what, I, what do you, What's the magic I, that you have going? I think the biggest thing is just getting a little momentum. You know, we've uh, we've been trying stuff all year long, and uh, it's really just small changes that we made to the car here and there. And, uh, you know, I think uh, 
not racing quite as much this year. You know, in past years, we've run that kind of grueling schedule of, you know, 13, 1400 miles a weekend and three nights. And you just could, you kind of get, uh, kind of wore out of a little bit with working a regular job. And, uh, this year we're, you know, we're running a lot of Friday nights and Saturday nights and, and, uh, Sundays we have a day to kind of get cars ready and get ready for the, uh, for the next weekend. So just being a little bit more relaxed and, uh, the whole team's kind of coming into their own and everyone's been working hard and doing their part and things are just kind of coming right along. We talk to sprint car racers all the time, and they're like, "Go, go, 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 go!" Is it was it has it been while you're seeing the benefits of limiting the schedule a little bit, and certainly limiting the long road trips that used to make to Knoxville all the time? Uh, has there been an adjustment period for you though, or you you're sitting around saying, "Wait a minute, we should be going somewhere"? <laughs> um, we, you know, we're still working on the cars and everything all the time. We kind of have our our schedule set up we're on Friday, Saturday, and, uh, yeah. you know, we travel through the night to get back for uh, Sunday, so we're still on the go all the time. You know, we'll get back at 4 in the morning on Sunday, but we meet at the shop about 9 o'clock and get the cars washed, and then you have a little family time Sunday to relax, but then we're back out at the shop Monday, Tuesday, getting stuff ready again. So uh, it's been it's been a little adjustment. It's been kind of a, a little bit different, but it's been very enjoyable to have a little bit more family time. Uh, i got two youngsters at home now that are one and three, so... I've been uh, have a little more time with them, and it's it's been rather enjoyable this summer. Mark, you obviously have your short track game on <laughs> strong, running River Cities and Badlands. But is there part of you that's missing the bigger tracks? Um, absolutely. You know, I've always been uh, since I started racing. I've always loved the short tracks more, just because that's kind of that fits obviously my style of driving better. A lot of action pack elbows up. Um, but uh, you know, Knoxville, we've had we've had quite a bit of success there over the years too, and uh, I do miss that a little bit. It's a whole different uh, when you hit Knoxville, it's a whole different style of racing. You know, it's more about uh, keeping the car straight and keeping your momentum up the whole time. And uh, I miss it a little bit, but I'm I'm such a short tracker fan that uh, all our uh, all our racing on the short tracks is making up for it. But uh, won't be long here, and we'll we'll get into this uh, Knoxville Nationals, and we'll hit the uh, Capitani Classic before that, so we'll, we'll get a little bit of a long track action here before we uh, get to the national. So, I was that was that was my next question: is what the game plan is because uh, we'll we'll see that so you get a little bit of uh, seat time on Sunday night at the Capitani Classic. One of the things that I've noticed, Mark, on your social media, you are doing a lot, and maybe you've done this all along. Maybe I'm just late to the party, but uh, you guys have a two seater, and you've been given a lot of rides in that. Um, is that something <laughs> new, or is that is, have you guys been doing that all along? Well, that's something that uh, over the, you could say, the course of the last, I, I think I finished it about two years ago, but over the course of about five years before that, I was kind of slowly working on it. <laughs> and uh, Eagle Eagle Motorsports actually helped me put the frame together a little bit. I started on it myself, and they finished it for me. So, um, But then we built the rest of the car, and you know, I got it done. But when a guy's racing so many races a weekend, you really don't have much time to bring it out. And uh, I finally had a little bit more time this year, so we got it worked out. And uh, we're actually using it as a fundraiser for uh, Relay for Life. Uh, cancer benefit as well so we've been uh, selling three three rides a weekend on friday nights at, at the bowl ring here and then we'll uh the three people that are drawn will get the rides of the following week so that's been a lot of fun uh, it's, it's kind of it's really neat to see the people's reactions when they when they jump out of that two-seater because uh it's it's a good ride when we built that one we didn't uh, we didn't mess around it's got a full full 800 horsepower engine and everything in it so they're getting a true sprint car ride that's awesome. I, we used to give two-seat rides at our little dirt track, and it was always a blast to see people's reaction when they got out of the car. <laughs> so, Mark, what's, yeah. the, what's the next few weeks look like? I know you're heading to Knoxville in a few weeks, but what do you have coming up short term? Yeah, for, well, for the next weekend here, we're going to run the uh, – we're, we're not quite sure for Friday yet. There's a big uh, NSL show in Jackson. We're kind of kicking around uh, running Friday, but uh, the work here has been busy, and we're just kind of debating whether we're, whether we're going to do the Jackson race or the, or the regular Friday night here in Grand Forks. And then we'll hit Badlands on Saturday, and we plan on doing that until we roll right into the Nationals, where we'll run Grand Forks uh, Friday, Saturday, and Badlands. Sunday, the Cappy Classic. We plan on doing Monday with Oski if the first three nights go well, and then I think we qualify Thursday night into the uh, Knoxville Nationals. So. Hopefully we can keep mm. this uh, head of steam that we got rolling and uh, carry it right into the Nationals. Boy, wouldn't that be sweet to keep that going. That's for sure, Mark. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's fantastic. It's been so much fun to watch from the distance here. We can't wait to catch up with you at Knoxville a couple weeks down the road. Uh, congratulations on all the success, and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you at Knoxville, if not before. Sounds great. Good to hear from you again. There we go. That's Mark Dobmeyer joining us. The Lundstrom Motorsports number 13 car, 11 wins on the season <laughs> and six straight. Can you imagine just walking in? You imagine like walking in Saturday night to Badlands. You just won the last five. It's like, wow. Oh. I can't imagine. I, one of the things I was going to ask, and we ran out of time. I wanted to talk about 
are people starting to get mad at you? Who's who's accusing you of cheating at this point? That's you know, a good you know? question. Yeah. yeah, that's a good question. Once you well, start winning, you start you know you realize you have a lot of fans, and then there's some there's people. some other ones. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's that's a that's a great point. So really, really cool. Uh, great for Mark Dobmeyer, one of the great great guys. Just, just always love having a chance to talk to him. He joined us on the Classic Ink pole position, Classic Ink screen printing and embroidery, great T-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, towels, hats, and more. All kinds of items, whether it's corporate, other sports, school, or special events. Find out why drivers like Brian Brown, Donnie Schatz, Danny Dietrich, Danny Lasoski, Brady Bacon, and more, they choose Classic Inc. You should, too. www.classicincusa.com. That's classicincusa.com. We need to step away when we come back. Another one of our sweepers. We're going out west where <laughs> Kyle Hurst dusted him up this past weekend. Stay with us. Hey, this is Donnie Schatz, and you're listening to Kendra and Steve on Wing Nation, here on MotorRacingNetwork.com. Aggressive Hydraulics, where we engineer the cylinders that move your business. We specialize in crafting hydraulic cylinders and components with superior precision and performance, making OEM products stronger and creating more opportunities for distributors and repair facilities. Crafting cylinders that operate on a global basis in a wide variety of industries and applications. Get aggressive with your cylinder challenges. Aggressive Hydraulics. Oh, oh, oh. O'Reilly. If your AC is blowing hot air, let O'Reilly Auto Parts help bring back the cool this summer. While you may need to eventually service your AC unit, get immediate relief with Interdynamics R134A refrigerant with leak sealer. Buy two, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Do you need help with moving your equipment? Industry-leading companies do, and they trust Housby Transport to move their internal equipment promptly and professionally. At Housby Transport, we pride ourselves on efficiency, timeliness, and saving our customers money with our team of logistics managers always ready to assist you in any way possible. Any size, any type, anywhere. Housby Transport is ready to move. For more information and to obtain a quote, visit Housby.com. Housby, an official sponsor of NASCAR for over 40 years. Time now for a look at a great American dirt track presented by another great American dirt track, the Speed Palace, Port Royal Speedway. This is Ashley Stremme. Originally a flat quarter mile dirt track when it opened in 1947, Kokomo Speedway in Kokomo, Indiana reconfigured in 2004, adding its current banking and wider racing surface that produces some of the best racing in the country. The Kinzer name has been synonymous with success at Kokomo as Bob, Kelly, Randy, and Craig Kinzer have wins or track championships at Kokomo. Ironically, the king of the outlaw, Steve Kinzer, has never visited Victory Lane at the track. Tony Elliott holds the record for the most sprint car wins at Kokomo with over 60 A-Main wins. Kokomo has hosted a who's who in racing. A.J. Foyt, Mario Andretti, Pancho Carter, Steve Kinzer, Tony Stewart, Jeff Gordon, Ryan Newman, Casey Kane, and Dave Blaney are just a few of the names that have visited the track. Kokomo Speedway, a great American dirt track brought to you by another great American dirt track, the Speed Palace, Port Royal Speedway. Thank you, Ashley. And, of course, we appreciate Port Royal bringing you the Great American Dirt Track segment. Uh, in just a little bit, you can go on our Facebook page, facebook.com, on our Wing Nation page, and share with us your Kokomo stories down at the Kokomo. They wrote a song about that, didn't they? Yeah, I, I thought so. I mean, I Bahamas. So. Jamaica, Bahamas, yeah. come on, pretty mama. Yeah, Throw Kokomo. a dirt track in there, a perfect vacation. Exactly. I'm <laughs> with you. Perfect for Christopher Bell and Rico Abreu. They won the uh, Articat All-Star Circuit of Champions races there yeah. over this past weekend. So really, really cool. We're having a lot of fun with it. Oh, and by the way, mentioning Facebook, uh, we're new today on the Motor Racing Network Facebook page. We're live streaming it. So hey, y'all, good to see everyone here on uh, Facebook.com. If you're listening and, and want to tune us in, uh, we have the YouTube channel, but Facebook.com. Com. We're streaming live on the Motor Racing Network page. The Great American Dirt Track is on the Wing Nation page. So get yourself straightened off with Facebook, and we've got some great, great things as well. Uh, speaking of great things, out west, it has been a banner season so far for Kyle Hurst, drives for the Roth Motorsports Tarleton and Sons machining team. And uh, Kyle joins us now after sweeping the Peter Murphy Classic at Tulare. Hello, Kyle. Welcome back to Wing Nation. 
Hey, thanks for having me, guys. How are you guys doing? We are doing hey. fantastic, but I don't know that we're doing as good as you're doing. <laughs> wow, what a weekend. Con- congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was an awesome weekend. Uh, Peter Murphy did a great job putting it all together and all the effort he put into putting that race on for us. And I'm um, just lucky we were able to get the his one uh, the one and Z tribute car for him in Victory Lane, and that was an honor to be able to do that. How did the tribute car come about? Um, I, the first year he put the show on, he wanted to have his car um, oh. back out on the racetrack, and so I was mm-hmm. running for Dennis Roth back then, and uh, they painted the car up, and I had I wanted to win it the first year and end up tearing the fence down and did that again the second <laughs> year, so it all played up, and I was finally able to do it this weekend, and it was just cool to get that car in victory lane for him again, and uh, like I said, it's just an honor that he picked me to do it, and I'm glad I could get it done. Well, yeah, because I saw a picture of you and Peter in Victory Lane. That uh, that that really had to be special. What is what? And, and and Peter's one of those names where I know and 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 hear so much respect for as a California guy. What is Peter Murphy and all that he has put into this sport? What does it mean to you to carry his colors and just him as a person? I uh, like it. It's just an honor to be able to do it. Um, he's such a great guy. I've been able to become great friends with him. He's actually worked with me a couple of nights this uh, year on the Tarleton deal. Um, just man, he puts so much into the sport and asks for nothing in return. I mean, the race for eleven thousand dollars out here out west is a pretty big deal when outlaws aren't in town or it's not trophy cup or something or gold cup. So, pretty good, cool deal. He goes and raises all this money for us. And like I said, he just puts in so many hours, probably away from his family in the shop, just working, just so we can have a race in his name like that. So, pretty cool to be able to do that. Uh, hope he can retire that car now, hang it up, and uh, <laughs> say it's got a win. And we swept the weekend and just go up on the shelf and be a cool uh, talk piece someday. Kyle, you guys have been on a, a tear lately, winning all sorts of races. Is it something you've hit on setup-wise? Is it confidence? What What do you have going on that's working so well? I don't know. We're just gelling. Um, you know, we've it's been on certain tracks. We went Chico, we went to Watsonville, we went to Larry. They were all a little bit different in their own feet. But um, it, we've just been getting along great with Paul Baines, the crew chief on the Tarleton car. And we've just been gelling. He gives me a great car every night. And I go out and do what I got to do. And it's been going well. So I'd say it's just gelling. We've been doing great. I have great a kit great equipment the guys just give me a great car every time i hit the racetrack so definitely a credit to tarleton motorsports and roth motorsports to be able to give me such a great car and making my job a lot easier to go out there and go around the racetrack racing out on the west coast um how are things going uh just just kind of it's it's the one area kyle where we just sadly don't get a chance to make it there just the way the schedules are and uh, we you know we don't we don't get out there much for our nascar stuff let alone for sprint car stuff uh, how are things going on the west coast with the king of the west and 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 really there's a lot of racing out there how are things going out there oh there's I mean, we got a great talent of car uh, group of guys and cars and everything like that i would love to see the car count get back up to 40 and you know a night and stuff like that but hopefully that's something over time we can build back up but um the teams and the drivers we have right now i mean there's a good group of guys every night you got to go out and run 100 percent, or you're not going to be able to win that thing so um i like this weekend we had myers join us um every once in a while you get rico to come back out here at home come race with us so um it's always a challenge always good good cars you just i would like to see personally the car, car counts grow um we are spread out here every saturday night you got three or four tracks running but that's the way it is. We got to. It, I just we could get a, all our good guys into one series and all run every weekend together. That's awesome, Kyle. What's on the horizon? Where are you headed? What's the upcoming plans? Oh, uh, we're just gonna finish out the King of the West deal with the Tarleton deal. Uh, definitely looking forward to Gold Cup when the Outlaws swing back out this way. If uh, we can keep our momentum going and try to run strong at that when they head out west, um, definitely got Trophy Cup to plan for. That's our big race out here towards the end of the year. I'd love to win that one and get that one under my belt. So um, just looking for all the big races. It's crazy. The year flies by already. You know, Knoxville's coming up in two weeks, and you know when that comes up, it's getting close towards the end of the year. So uh, hopefully just keep this stride going and keep winning races for my team and, um, you know, be, have that confidence rolling when the big races come around towards the end of the year. Are you headed to Knoxville? <laughs> no, we're not headed to Knoxville. Not at this moment. I, mm-hmm. I got in a stride before, and they kept mentioning it, talking about it. But um, as of right now, I don't think we're going. So um, I'd love to, you know, if the opportunity ever come up to go out there for me, I'd love to go do it. Um, but so we'll see. Other than that, we'll just plan on stick around California and hit all the big races and try to keep our momentum going. Do you? Um, I, I looked at the King of the West schedule, and you guys raced this weekend in Placerville, and then uh, yep. and you guys have been just buried with races, which is great every weekend. Mm-hmm. But you do have a few weeks off in August now. Uh, are there any plans for some 360 racing, or are you just going to take a little downtime from it and uh, you know and, and pick back up the second half of August? No, absolutely. I always try to race every weekend. I think I'm taking one weekend off from a. Uh, a buddy's bachelor party, a good friend of mine I got to go to, and that'll be a great weekend uh, taking a break from racing. But other than that, 
uh, family farms. They keep me busy running 360, 410 stuff when I'm not in the Tarleton car. Um, we got a big another race at Plasterville falling this weekend, five grand to win. So we'll go do that. Um, there's always something. There's a, we got the Johnny Key Classic out here at Watsonville. Um, so there's always stuff. Pretty much every weekend I'm finding a track to go to. But it's been nice being able to race Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, last couple of weeks. So, um, yeah, definitely find some 360. Don't want to lose this momentum that we have going right now. Um, I'm hoping to get the Tarleton car up there to Plasterville next two weekends. And then take a weekend off, go watch Knoxville Nationals and relax and enjoy that. And then, uh, yeah, back into it and get ready for the end of the season. Okay, so where's the bachelor party at? <laughs> oh, we're just going camping up here. Nothing too exciting. Just going up to Lake Almore, get away for the weekend and enjoy it. And then those are all, hey, I'm, I'm the older I'm getting, the more of those I'm enjoying those weekends. <laughs> a weekend off of racing is not a bad thing. Yeah, used to be bachelor parties were someplace <laughs> loud. Now it's someplace quiet, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The quiet, we can get loud in a quiet place. There you go. Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. Well, that is great. It's been so much fun following along with you. Uh, five wins on the King of the West Tour and uh, sweeping this past weekend. Won the Howard Cading Classic the weekend before. Uh, Kyle, we appreciate your time joining us. Congratulations on the uh, continued success. And uh, we'll uh, chat with you down the road. But thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me again, guys. If I keep winning, hopefully I'll get back on the show again. Keep doing that and we'll do our part. That sounds good. Thanks, oh. Kyle. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. That is Kyle Hirsch joining us here on the program, and what a role he's been on with yeah. all those wins. And 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 I sincerely, it's it's frustrating because it's one area of the country. Uh, we do one race, MR, and, and and a lot of times, like like this week, I'm going to get a chance to get to Sealands Grove. Yeah. Uh, because we're at Pocono. Um, the last time at Pocono, I was able to hit Williams Grove, and uh, and and Williams Grove in Ohio. That's six eight hours on the road to get to it. I just wish that there were a way to get to more yeah. California races. Uh, the MRN schedule, we do one race in California, California Speedway at Auto Club, and it's March. Yeah. There's no sprint car race. Or the World <laughs> of Outlaws are way up north, which that's eight hours away. Yeah. Um, and then, and then you know, the other network, PRN, does Sonoma, which would be great because you're right there in sprint car country when you're out there at Sonoma. And I just, I, I just, uh, we need somebody with a fast plane to get us so we can get out <laughs> to the West Coast because the the racing out there is phenomenal. It is. The tracks are great. Tracks are great. I I'm watch not, the videos yeah. of them. The racing is great. Uh, King of the West, um, what what the, what they put together out there, really across the board, is great. Yeah. I mean, there's a ton. I mean, when you look at a Saturday night, and, and, and Kyle was right, there are three or four tracks that have great 360 programs as well. And then Silver Dollar has a number of 410 shows that are, yeah. that are standalone. I mean, it's it's one of those areas that's really strong and I, and, and, and growing, and I just wish we could get out there more. So yeah, that's yeah I told you list. you need to put Trophy Cup and Gold Cup Yeah, on you the were telling room. me that, too. Yeah. yeah, my gosh, great, great stuff. So appreciate Kyle Hurst joining us here, and uh, we certainly wish him the best as we continue on. And we are going to continue with the sweepers <laughs> because uh, our buddy Johnny Hollywood Herrera, he drove to South Dakota this past weekend with the Lucas Oil ASCS Tour, and he just hogged up victory lane all weekend long. We'll talk to Hollywood in just a moment. I'm Shane Stewart, and you're listening to Wing Nation on MotorRacingNetwork.com. Racers, that's who Valco Wheels are. That's who they know, and racing is what they know. Valco Wheels focuses oval track and grassroots racing and understand racers need a quality wheel that fits your budget. With over 25 years' experience, Valco Wheels produces the best product and give you face-to-face -face support and customer service at the track. Fast delivery, innovative products, problem solving. Find Valco Wheels at Valco.com on Twitter or Facebook or call Valco Wheels at 609-758-7013. Valco Wheels. The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in Knoxville, Iowa. Honoring Sprint Car Racing's greatest achievers. 25 historic sprint cars on display. A movie theater featuring sprint car racing films. And a breathtaking view of historic Knoxville Raceway. Go to SprintCarStuff.com for the largest sprint car gift shop on the planet. The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in Knoxville, Iowa. Business is a lot like racing. It takes a strong team of pros to succeed. That's why Freightliner Trucks created TeamRunSmart.com, a free online community that connects owner-operators with the trucking industry's A-Team. The Team Run Smart pros and coaches help maximize your profitability with real-world advice on everything from fuel-efficient specking to healthy eating to filing taxes. Sign up today to earn rewards and connect with fellow truckers at TeamRunSmart.com. This is Winged Nation on MRN.com. Now, back to Steve Post and Aaron Evernham. Thank you so much for joining us. It is MRN Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tire. We're going back to the Hercules Tire hotline now. Uh, Aaron, I just love 
uh, racing boys coverage of Lucas Oil yeah. ASCS. Scott Trailer just has become a dear job. friend. They do a great job. Scotty Cook just absolutely cr- he can turn the microphone on and say hey, and I just laugh because he just <laughs> is such a fun guy. But uh, I literally laughed out, out loud because I was listening to it Friday night. It was the Rushmore Rumble, and uh, Scotty Cook introduced the guy in victory lane as the old fart. <laughs> That's how he introduced the, the guy goes out and drives the wheels off the car, and Scotty Cook's got to give him a shot like that. I mean, Hollywood sounds a lot better Hollywood than old Hollywood sounds a fart. whole lot better than old fart, that's this for sure. Wrong. But uh, but that's Scotty Cook, and that's why you tune in uh, to the Racing Boys. And they do a great job with their Lucas Oil ASCS coverage, and they do a great job covering this guy. And he swept the weekend one both Friday and Saturday night at the Rushmore Rumble. We're going with Hollywood. Johnny Herrera joins us. Hello, Johnny. Hey, how's it going there, Eric? We are fantastic. How are you? Congratulations on the great weekend. Well, thank you, thank you. It was uh, it was uh, definitely was a good one. Um, <clears throat> we and we sure did need it. That, that you know, coming into the big race here uh, the next couple of weeks. Johnny, I saw in the press release they talked about the track being rubbered down. Describe how difficult it is when you're trying to worry about tire management, but yet keep you know second and third behind you. Well, yeah. I mean, we knew it was going to take rubber, just a matter of when, and then. Like I said, being in the front, you just don't you want you want to run hard, but at the same time you want to keep yourself straight and uh, uh, conserve your tire. A couple weeks ago, I didn't do that, and I blew a tire like twenty four laps into the feature. So uh, <clears throat> fortunately, we you know started in the front, and we were able to kind of maintain the pace that we needed to you know maintain and didn't have to chase anybody. But at the same time, uh, we had to uh, keep everybody pretty close. Johnny, how tough is that to do? I'm, I've never been in a race car in my life, okay? Now, Crocker, she's sitting here. She's, 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 she's been out there a lot of times. I get the chasing somebody down part and running a pace. How difficult is it to maintain a pace when you're the guy that they're all chasing? Well, that's the thing. I mean, especially when you get rubber down. I mean, you just, you're, if you're leading, you can I kind of run your own race and yeah. uh, pace yourself as far as keeping the tires underneath you and keeping your car straight. But at the same time, if you just, you kind of, you kind of try to race with eyes in the back of your head, really. I mean, you're listening, looking. Uh, <laughs> is, I think there was one example there. I think Aaron uh, show, uh, made a pass to me about five to six to go. I seen just take a chance. I was balled up behind lap cars, but, you know, I wasn't going to move off the bottom, and uh, nobody was pressuring me. Uh, he made a run on the outside. I see him out of the corner of my eye. I said, well, I better pick up the pace a little bit here. And I was, it's not that I wasn't running hard. I was just running hard enough yeah. to know that, you know, I, I had some more left to step up if I needed to. You know, when I was reading about the track rubber down, it sounded like there was still a decent amount of passing. I always think of a rubber down track as one lane. Was there multiple grooves? Yeah, actually, it started out really good. You know, top and the bottom, the first go oh, probably six, eight laps of that of that feature. But as we went, of course, um, the track just started rubbering up and just started moving down. Started, you were on the top and the bottom, but it's really around the top, and then just started working its way down. And then, of course, by the end of the feature, it was uh, just down around the inside of the wall. Okay, Johnny, so when I look at the last month, I mean, I, I, I get an absolute headache or, or indigestion thinking about, in the last month, you guys have wa- raced in Washington, Oregon, Montana, and South Dakota. There is none of them near anything and each other. What is, have you guys just stayed up there? Has it just been a big family road trip? Is that what it's been? Or have you gone back and forth? How have you managed these last uh, five, six weeks? Well, when we headed out west there, we were out there. We got two weekends in a row. We went to Skagit there in Alma. So those were two weekends back-to-back. Got those done. Um, we headed to uh, Montana, which was the next weekend, and got the Belgrade in. Yep. And then, of course, uh, I actually flew home. We had 10 days off there, and I actually flew back home to Oklahoma and spent uh, you know a week, a week back at home and taking care of some things and getting things lined out, uh, getting ready to get things organized because, of course, the Nationals are coming up and trying to get all prepared for that. So went home, you know, spent some quality time at home, did some things, and came back and, uh, you know, flew back to South Dakota for last weekend. John, you've had the opportunity to race in all different sprint car series. The competition level in the ASCS seems really strong. Is that how it is? It is. It's real competitive. I mean, all series are competitive. I mean, uh, they all are, but it seems like – Everyone is so equally matched in the ASCS. I mean, at any given night, any, there's, you know, 10, 12 cars that can win the feature every, every night. And um, you got to run hard. And, of course, um, you know, there's a lot of young, these young kids, boy, they're coming up. They're making it harder on an old guy, <laughs> as they, uh, Scotty Cook said the other night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my but, gosh. Uh, no, it is. It's really, 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 really tough. These guys are running real hard. Like I said, the young, young kids are getting a lot more experience and uh, are just getting better in the race car and getting the race cars good. And, uh, you know, now it's going to just come down to being kind of a little bit wiser on the racetrack than, you know, these kids run, like I said, they run you really hard.
I, I, I that's what I think is so fascinating. Uh, watching the, the lakeside race that I was at, and then just watching it and and follow along, is that you've got some incredible veteran racers like you, Johnny, and you've got these young kids mm-hmm. that they may not know any better, but they knew know where the gas pedal is. That's for <laughs> sure. And it just and then guys in the middle like a Sam Hayfertip in the middle that just keep everyone honest, and it's just really makes for some great racing. What you've got there with the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour presented by MAV TV Motorsports Television. All right, Johnny, you mentioned the Knoxville Nationals, of course, the 360 Nationals ASCS race. I know you're locked in for that. Uh, do you have? Are you planning on uh, dropping a 410 in for the uh, for the for the big one as well? Oh uh, yes, sir. I sure do. I got uh, I got a couple 4 410s. Actually, I got one right now. I got one that's broke. So yeah, we have one that we're going to go and uh, you know we're there racing and there's nothing else really going on. So we're going to stick around there and uh, you know roll the dice and see what we can uh, see if we can get ourselves at least qualified and get us in a good position to uh, have a, you know a decent uh, uh, 410 nationals. Man, I'll tell you what, that's what I love about it is we get a chance to see guys mm-hmm. like Johnny Race against the World of Outlaw guys and Pennsylvania guys and everything. And speaking of Pennsylvania, okay, Johnny, we have this Facebook thing, and we have a question on Facebook. Of, and, and I know the Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour has no plans, but uh, racing in Pennsylvania, do you have any plans to do it? Would you like to do it? Do you have any uh, any great memories from racing in Pennsylvania? Uh, just Just kick that around a little bit for us. Well, absolutely. I mean, I haven't been back there for so long. I've been running, you know, ASCS Lucas Soul Series for the past six years, uh, and uh, we just haven't got back there. Our series doesn't get back that far. It was good to go back to Indiana and uh, Michigan this year, and yep. it would be great to go to Pennsylvania. I liked it. I really loved going out there, especially Williams Grove. I mean, uh, well, when I first started racing, I remember I didn't, I hated going to that place, and I just, <laughs> I struggled there. It's, hard, it's a hard place to get uh-huh. going at. But uh, I finally won a race there, and then once I won there. Uh, every time I went back there, it wasn't near as bad. But, uh, you know, Williams Grove is a really great place. Uh, Lincoln Speedway, Hagerstown, uh, Port Royal, Susquehanna, all in. I remember going back to them, and they, they were just a lot of fun, and the fans were great back there, too. Like I so said, I haven't been back there in a long, long, several years, maybe 10, 12 years, but, uh, yeah, I'd sure like to get back there at some point before I decide I'm not going to do this anymore. Indeed, it would be cool. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, just uh, the, the 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 pace you're going, there's still a lot of race wins and and maybe even a trip to the Keystone State in the future, Johnny. Uh, we certainly congratulate you on the uh, successful season thus far. 17 career national tour wins, four wins this season, including both nights of the Rushmore Rumble up in South Dakota. Uh, always a pleasure to chat, and uh, we'll talk to you in person in Knoxville in a few weeks. But thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me, Stephen. Aaron, it's been a uh, it was a pleasure. All right, there we go. That is Johnny Herrera. I love, I love what he is, who he is, yeah. his history, his passion, the way he races now. I mean, there's just hardcore racer. He is a great guy. When I ran Knoxville Weekly years back, now Johnny was running there as well, and he was very helpful. And it was just, you know, some competitors don't want to give advice or help, and Johnny's not one of those. He's he was helpful and always there to chat with. He is great. He really is. They were close. I mean, I don't know. I might, might be spilling the beans on something here, but there was close to a an ASCS National Tour race in Central Pennsylvania this year. Really? Yeah. There, mm. uh, there's, there's, uh, there's dropping some, hints. There's some folks that want to do it. Okay, I'm, I'm, and I believe it might be both sides. <laughs> so uh, that would be sweet to get the uh, Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour over in Pennsylvania. We mentioned the Knoxville Nationals. We can't wait to get out there. It's mm-hmm. going to be the Articat Wing Nation. And we're going to be on stage every night, Wednesday through Saturday. Aaron's going to be yep. out there. Our girl Lauren from our TV show is going to be there. Uh, Kendra's going to join us along the yep. way. And we can't wait. It's Articat Wing Nation coming up from the Knoxville Raceway and the Knoxville Nationals. And off turn number two with Knoxville is the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. They have the Expand the Dream program. And we always look at birthdays. Monday birthday, Len, uh, Lee Duncan. Listen to today's birthday list. Okay. Today, Doug Wolfgang. So happy birthday to Doug yep. Wolfgang, Davey Heskin, uh, Bruce Craig, and today would have been the birthday for Rich Vogler. So Vogler and Wolfgang born on That's the same day. That's pretty I didn't know that. That is pretty sporty. That really is. Um, Brad Doty's birthday tomorrow. So an early birthday wish to yes, our buddy Brad happy Doty. happy birthday, Brad. Yes, indeed. Chet Wilson and Rojo Jack on Thursday. R. Keith Hall and Daryl Dolly on Saturday. But let's go back and talk a little bit about Rich Vogler. Uh, June 26th, 1950, he was born. 1992, National Sprint Car Hall of Fame inductee. And, and I started to jot down... <laughs> The history, and I got writer's cramp, carpal tunnel, and everything else. I mean, Mm -hmm. if there's a race, he won it. Yep. It's absolutely amazing when you look at Rich Vogler. He was the sprint car champ for USAC two years, five-time midget series champ, all the major midget races, 
170 USAC wins, plus over 200 non-USAC wins. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Really, really cool. Tragically uh, died uh, July 21st, 1990 at Salem Speedway. And uh, did, did you ever... Did, did, did you, I never young. got to meet you're him, young. but That's I was a, a young. huge fan. I was a yeah. huge fan. We used to watch Thursday Night Thunder right, exactly. and Saturday Night Thunder. Huge fan. And I was nine years old when he passed away, and I can remember exactly where I was and when my father told me. Like, I, I was seriously a huge fan. I have a huge one of his books. I don't It's like a coffee table book yeah. that someone gave me and all these pictures of him. Yeah. Huge fan. Uh, he was supposed to make his NASCAR Winston Pocono, Cup debut right? at Pocono the next yep. day. He had tried to qualify for Michigan a few weeks earlier, failed to qualify. Um, I had talked to him on Friday or Saturday at Pocono. At Pocono, right? and then I was covering flew. for Gator Racing News. I was writing, yeah. writing for Gator Racing News, and he said, "Just come over to the car, go over to the garage mm-hmm. Sunday morning, and we'll talk." And I was going to oh. do a, just a, n- n- a yeah, exactly, a little piece. I remember I was sitting in my apartment in Clark Summit, Pennsylvania, watching yeah. that race at Salem, and you just knew when yeah. the accident happened. It was you, they, so they didn't have to they, they didn't yeah. have to say much. Ray on had it. spoken about how he talked to him at Pocono just the day before as well. Yeah, I'm unreal. So uh, tragically, we lost Rich Vogler, but the good news is is you can relive the life, the times, the career of Rich Vogler, and you can do that at the National mm-hmm. Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in Knoxville, Iowa. More information: SprintCar H O F dot com. That's www dot SprintCar H O F.com. Wing to Nation with Steve and Aaron will return in just a moment on MRN.com. The 25th year of the Lucas Oil American Sprint Car Series is about to begin. Expanded national and regional tours, over 150 events across the United States, and some of Sprint Car Racing's biggest names and rising stars. The 25th anniversary of the Lucas Oil ASCS is one you don't want to miss. Find out when the American Sprint Car Series is near you in 2016 at ASCSRacing.com. Find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and catch all the action away from the track live at RacingBoys.com. Classic Ink USA Screen Printing and Embroidery is constantly testing the limits of custom racewear and specialized embroidery. Headquartered in western Pennsylvania, Classic Ink holds the highest standard, maximizing your return as well as the ultimate customer satisfaction. From track swag fan wear to quick crew crew wear, Classic Ink has you covered. Their dedicated staff and designers will keep your race team and fans looking sharp. Contact Classic Ink today and get your team ahead of the competition. www.classicinkusa.com That's Classic Ink at the track and on your back. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Looking for high-quality replacement parts for your import vehicle? Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and check out the full line of Import Direct OE replacement parts designed for European and Asian vehicles and meet or exceed all OE quality standards for fit, form, and function. Import Direct, exclusively at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices, every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. I'm Casey Kane. Now back to Wing Nation. I wonder if Casey cut that in victory lane at Oshweekin last night. <laughs> yeah, he's racing again tonight, too. Is he? Now, what oh. race is going on there? World of Outlaws is tonight. It? Oh, tonight. Oh, yeah, what Aaron, was last night? We, uh, tonight was a 360 race. Okay, and then, that's what I was Oh, Aaron, we are locked in tonight. You ain't going to – I haven't even – we haven't got to the schedule yet. We've got oh, the boy. World of Outlaws at Oshweekin and the Pennsylvania Posse's at Grandview for two features. Wow. Make up of the Speed Week one and a complete show. Tuesday so, night. How do you tune into both? Oh, you're kidding me. You, you get follow multiple your computers Twitter machines, and things going Twitter on. machines and race <laughs> monitor and dirt visions and oh my gosh, you ought to see the command center that Control I'll panel. I'm actually gonna be announcing at Charlotte, so I'm gonna have the command center in the press box oh, wow. at Charlotte. And How do you we, manage that? We I may have a legend like sprint cars. We may have a legends car feature with Donnie Shots leading it. Who knows? <laughs> Just stay tuned. That's exactly. Awesome. Exactly. I love it. Hey, time for our Jeff Gordon's person of the week. Okay. You might have met this guy met you, Ray Bug. Okay. Okay. He is uh, okay, and he and, and you know he said he met you one time. As far as that goes, Ray has listened to this. A seventy-eight-year-old USCS racer from Luca, oh, Mississippi. Oh, I yep. I'm, yep. Ray is. I'm. We're gonna have Ray on the show at some point when the, awesome. when the when the eighty-two thousand races a week settle down <laughs> to a few. We're gonna get Ray on the show because he's great. He's been racing for fifty-eight years. That's awesome. All sprint cars. All sprint cars. That's okay. Cool. So I'm wandering around and I see a. Sticker on his car, hashtag carry strong, pink sticker. Yeah. Well, when you see pink stickers, you usually know it involves cancer. Yep. I mean, it just just is. Uh, I asked Verna about the story, and honestly, she said they just bought that at Talladega Short Track. And some girl, some high school Aww, girl was cool. battling cancer. 
Uh, I was able to do a little bit of research at Kerry Gonzalez, a freshman in high school when cancer struck. Uh, wow. The good news is is that this spring, and this is when the fundraiser was going on at Talladega Speed uh, Short Track, yep. uh, she was in Boston getting treatment, and on her Facebook page, June 3rd, cancer-free. Uh, awesome. I know, I know, exactly. This is one of those, the, when we talk about the Jeff Gordon cancer stories, there's some of these that end one way that we don't like, and there's other ones that continue on and really have good news. So this is really, really good. But what we're going to do is our Jeff Gordon kick a person of the week, we're going to give it to Ray and Verna Bug because they spent the money on the sticker. Yeah, and it... And you know, got yeah, you to exactly, ask the question. Exactly, and it's the awareness. And we've got Carrie Gonzalez, who's battling battling cancer, um, and uh, she's back leading life. She sings on her Facebook. She sings, and she just sings beautifully. Very cool. But it's such a neat thing, and it's awareness, but it's but it's uh, Ray Bug and, and Verna, his wife, just buying a sticker. Yeah. Well, that buying a sticker contributed to the family getting to Boston, which contributed to her getting treatment. And, and raised awareness. Exactly. There's times we talk about just big things that people do, and there's times we talk about a little thing that mm-hmm. somebody does. And so this week, Jeff Gordon's Kick It, Person of the Week, Ray Bug and his wife, Verna, racers from the USCS and uh, purchasers of the hashtag Carrie Strong sticker. And uh, this one is uh, a good ending with the cancer battle, cancer-free on uh, June 3rd. So awesome. great, great stuff. Hey, one other thing we want to mention here, uh, along the way we talk a lot about our sponsors and our advertisers. Uh, we want to say thank you and uh, so long for a while for our friends at Velco Racing Wheels. Um, honestly, uh, in talking with uh, Taylor Weld, uh, they're one of the first ones that came on with us. They've done the Velco Racing Wheels results page. Uh, Taylor says we have a problem. We can't keep up with everything that we've got. So it's a success story. Yeah. And he says, we just need to take a breather from the advertising right now and just kind of catch up and make sure that we're – because they do they do sprint cars, but then they do other, midgets and yep. a lot of other wheels as well. And so we want to thank Valco Racing Wheels for their partnership. It's been two years now we've been partners with them. Uh, they race uh, Brent Marks, Ryan Smith, Craig Delansky all using their wheels, so they're all working really well. Uh, going to take a little breather. We're going to talk at PRI, and maybe we'll hear from our friends at Valco again. But we certainly wish them the best. And, you know, it's, it's great. It's We're sad to lose an advertiser and a partner but we like doing it for successful reasons absolutely and this is one of those that's worked really well for both of us we're just going to take a little breather and then uh hopefully we'll get a chance to talk with those folks and about those folks coming up a little bit later on but uh, thanks to our friends at valco uh more information valco v-a-h-l-c-o dot com uh racing action tonight world of outlaw craftsman sprints at us weekend grandview speedway two features i'm so pumped up i am so <laughs> pumped up tomorrow night it's the speed week kickoff for the moa series they're in Piera, peoria illinois and on thursday night we have two we have a continuation of the moa series they're at quincy for week no- night number two of speed weeks and lucas oil ascs national tour park jefferson south dakota international speedway so we're going to have the racing boys twisted in from up at Pocono on Thursday <laughs> night and uh, see who Scotty Cook offends in Victory Lane, so, or who he talks to in Victory Lane. <laughs> so uh, Thursday night, uh, ASCS National Tour Racing. The weekend, Craftsman, uh, World of All Craftsman Sprint Cars, Friday at Hartford, Saturday at Wilmot. The All-Stars, the Articat All-Stars, going for three. Erie's, Pennsylvania, wow. Pittsburgh's Pennsylvania Motor Speedway, and Tri-City Raceway Park all weekend long. National Sprint League has three. Jackson, $20,000. I think they're paying $20,000 wow. to win Jackson on That's Friday awesome. night. Um, Knoxville Raceway and Hancock County Speedway in Britt, Iowa. MOA continues Speed Week Friday in Jacksonville, Illinois. Saturday in Macon, bumper-to-bumper IRA spritz. They're at Langlade Speedway in Ante- uh, Antigua, Wisconsin. King of the West, we talked about this, Placerville. And how about this one? The Mid-Atlantic Crown Weekend for 360 Sprints, the weekend of money they're calling it. URC ESS co-sanctioning Friday night Williams Grove four thousand to win Saturday Sealings Grove Sealings Grove the National Open ten thousand to win Sunday the Coal Cup ten thousand to win wow. at Utica Rome a guy can walk out with thirty four thousand dollars that's it's awesome the weekend of money and speaking of that Davey Franek going to join us on MRN Wing Nation Weekend presented by Hefner Racing Products on Thursday to talk about that uh, Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour they have a ten thousand dollar to win show on Sunday at Badlands at well as well weekly racing. Attica, Lernerville, River City, Silver Dollar, Williams Grove on Friday. Atomic, Badlands, Butler, Fremont, Greenbush, Lincoln, Mercer, Ohio Valley, Port Royal, Wayne County. Oh, my gosh. The Twitter machine's going to be broke. We're going to be following along with all of that. So, great, great stuff. And joining us this week on MRN Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit on MAV-TV, Brian Brown. 
That'll Brownie be joins one. us. Yeah, it's going to be great. That is Saturday at 9.30 and 12.30 in the afternoon. We appreciate Ralph Shaheen, Mark Dobmeyer, Kyle Hurston, Johnny Herrera for joining us today on Wing Nation. You've been listening to the nation's premier winged sprint car radio program. Winged Nation. Tune in next Tuesday at noon for more talk from the dirt tracks. Winged Nation is also available on demand in the MRN.com Media Center or download from iTunes or Stitcher. Winged Nation is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.